let's talk about how to give him a mind-blowing P-spot orgasm without feeling super awkward. You're in the right place if you're curious about prostate play, milking the prostate, and all of those terms you may have heard. This video is going to take you step by step on how to do this with confidence, with as much pleasure as possible, and in a way that boosts intimacy. Let's get into it. I'm Lisa Welsh. I'm a sex educator dedicated to helping busy couples have more fun in bed. And my first tip on how to give him a mind-blowing P-spot orgasm is understanding the P-spot. So the prostate is only found in those assigned male at birth. So the P-spot is also known as the prostate gland. That is the medical term for it. It's also sometimes called the God spot because it's kind of like the G spot, but for people who were assigned male at birth. There are some similarities between G spot orgasms in people assigned female at birth and P-spot orgasms between people assigned male at birth but there is not much scientific evidence about these things. So while there are not very many studies, there's an awful lot of anecdotal evidence and people who experience pleasure through stimulating these areas. So it is a walnut shaped gland that sits underneath the bladder of men and people with penises. And it kind of surrounds the urethra or the P-tube, a lot like the G-spot in women. And because of that location, that's why you might often feel the need to pee, like the urge to pee when you stimulate this area. And it is considered to be an erogenous zone for many people. And there are an awful lot of nerve endings there. So there is a lot of sensation that can be experienced by touching it. But the function of the prostate is actually to secrete a fluid that contributes to semen production and helps to nourish the sperm. So when a man or a person with a penis ejaculates, the prostate squeezes and secretes its fluid, which then is mixed up with the sperm and ejaculates out of the penis. And because of its location and the fact that the most direct way to access the P-spot is through the anus and into the rectum, there are some misconceptions about the P-spot. So that brings me on to my next step on how to give him a mind-blowing P-spot orgasm, which is to bust the stigmas and the myths. The biggest one that I want to start by busting is the idea that having the P-spot stimulated says something about a person's masculinity or sexual orientation. Often people think that because the P-spot is inside the anus, then it's only something that can be enjoyed by people who are gay or bisexual, and that is just not the case. Sexual preferences and activities do not determine a person's masculinity or sexual orientation. P-spot stimulation can be enjoyed by anybody who has a prostate. Another common misconception is that P-spot stimulation is really painful. But as you're gonna see in my next tips, it can be incredibly pleasurable if done correctly, always adhering to people's boundaries along the way. There can also be feelings of shame with wanting to explore this part of the body, and that is often because of cultural taboos and societal norms that tell us that it's dirty or weird, or you know, only those kinds of people try this stimulation. But it's really important to address those concerns head on and accept that we are entitled to stimulate any part of our body. Our body is ours, and we're allowed to explore it in any way that we desire. And finally, people can be worried about potential health risks of stimulating the prostate, but if done carefully with good hygiene, this risk can be minimized, okay? So we're gonna talk about hygiene and how to make sure that you are going gentle, taking your time, then this can become a pleasurable activity with very low potential for any health risks, and in fact, the potential for a number of health benefits. So that brings me to my next tip on how to give him a mind-blowing P-spot orgasm, which is understanding all of the awesome health benefits that can be associated with prostate milking, prostate massage. Why on earth would you want to? Like, why would your partner want you to? Well, first of all, it can lead to enhanced pleasure and full body orgasms. And this can be attributed to the high number of nerve endings that are located in the prostate gland. In fact, some people consider the prostate orgasm to be the pinnacle of male pleasure, far surpassing the way that it feels to have a penis-based orgasm. And why not do both at once? I'm a huge advocate for blended orgasms. So by combining the stimulation of the P-spot with the penis or other erogenous zones, this can double the intensity and enhance the pleasure enormously. And then of course, the very fact that this might be new and novel and exciting and yeah, a bit taboo can really enhance the experience as well. Just the psychological aspect of doing something that you might consider naughty can be such a hot turn on. 
But of course, the effects of prostate stimulation and orgasms can vary from person to person. So always approach this with an open mind and no judgment. Plus, P-spot massage has also been connected with prostate health. While P-spot stimulation itself does not directly prevent prostate health issues, there are benefits associated with massage of this area. These include improved blood circulation to the area. More blood means more nutrients and more oxygen to the prostate, which is an overall bonus for prostate health. The enhanced prostate drainage may also be beneficial. Of course, this does drain with normal ejaculation, but there is some evidence to suggest that milking the prostate can enhance this natural phenomenon. So milking the prostate can help to remove irritants and toxins and other bacteria and just really help the area to flush out nicely. So regular sexual activity, including P-spot stimulation, can just enhance the overall, overall health of the prostate and hormonal balance for people with prostates. Plus, one of my all-time favorite reasons for doing this massage is that journeying together to find and stimulate the peace spot can really enhance intimacy and connection between partners. And this can really carry on outside of the bedroom. Now, before I move on to the next tip, if you are a busy couple who really want to find more time and inspiration for sexy connections, then make sure you click the link that is in the description box below and in the comments section, because I have a free guide for you that delivers two sexy date night plans completely mapped out and you can just follow along. And you get to take all the credit for these awesome sexy adventures. So again, that link is in the description and it's in the comments section in bedwithlisa.com forward slash guide. Now let's move on to my next tip. My next tip on how to give him a mind-blowing peace spot orgasm without feeling totally awkward is communication and consent. And no, don't worry, we are getting to the good stuff, but this is really important. It is essential that you can have open and honest conversations with your partner before you move on to any kind of sexual activity like this that requires a lot of vulnerability. And as I always say, obtaining explicit consent before or engaging in any sexual activity is essential even if this is your partner that you've been with for a very long time, right? It is important that everybody is free to engage in these activities without feeling pressured or coerced, okay? And even if you've done it before, doesn't mean that you're going to have to do it again, right? You always get to choose. So this goes for the person who is receiving the prostate massage and also for the person giving it. It's essential that everybody involved is comfortable. So how do you initiate a conversation? Like, how do you say, I would like a peace spot massage or how do you say i would like to give you a prostate massage like how do we get there well it can be a sensitive topic that is for sure so start by choosing the right time and place make sure your partner is not stressed don't wait until you're in the bedroom before you say hey can i stick my finger up your butt <laughs> you want to make sure that you are able to speak without interruption in a calm and relaxed place maybe have some educational resources to hand something like this video if this is a genuine desire that you would like to explore then express that in an open way inviting discussion and letting your partner know that you would love to explore this new boundary of pleasure and see the intimacy that could arise from that active listening is really important because as we've mentioned all of the shame and taboo can cause people to react initially in ways that aren't necessarily how they really feel right we can sometimes have this first reaction that makes us like oh i think okay i'll never broach that again but actually we're going to be open we're going to be active listeners we're going to listen to one another because this is important this is how we get to experience our most pleasurable sex lives ever by expressing honestly and listening to each other this conversation may happen all in one go or it may happen over days or weeks or even months or even years and it is a great opportunity to express any fears or concerns anything you might be worried about regarding the pain or the safety or any of the myths that we spoke about they might come up and you can always seek professional guidance if needed there are sex educators there are sex coaches there are sex therapists available to help you navigate this new experience if that's something that you would like so now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty my next tip on how to give him a mind-blowing peace spot orgasm without feeling totally awkward is preparation and safety. So it's really, really important that the person receiving the peace spot stimulation is relaxed and aroused before we start to explore. Because when the body is not relaxed or adequately aroused, then it can actually be tense, right? And that could lead to discomfort, pain, 
and certainly a less enjoyable experience. It will also help the receiver with the psychological readiness for exploring this new kind of stimulation. Let's be real, stimulating the prostate is a vulnerable act, so it requires a level of surrender and trust in the person who is giving this act. And that's why it actually can be quite good to start off P-spot stimulation alone, right? If you are the person with the prostate, I recommend that you start by exploring it on your own because that takes away another level of worry. But we'll talk more about that in a second. Additionally, when the body is aroused, it's going to make the P-spot more sensitive, right? As the blood flow is rushing there, the area becomes awakened and aroused is going to be more readily available to receive sexual stimulation. And of course, when you are more relaxed, then you are more in touch with what is happening in your body. You can actually be connected to the sensations and able to give honest feedback to your partner in the moment to say yes this feels good or no this doesn't because if you are so stressed and worried about what is going to happen and what is this going to mean about you then it can be difficult to actually notice what is going on so how can you relax and get aroused well with lots of foreplay and erotic stimulation. You can be stimulating erogenous zones of the body, the penis, making out and just getting into the mood. You could have safe words and feedback systems so that you know you can communicate at any time and let your partner know if you want everything to stop. That can really help you to feel relaxed. And if you really want to help your partner to relax, you can also encourage them to breathe deeply, to meditate, to have some kind of erotic visualization, or even give them a beautiful sensual massage. And of course, take your time. We are about to get onto the techniques, but I just want to say this, there's no need to rush. There's no need to do it all in one go. There's no need to be the very first time you explore to like literally make it happen. You can do this in baby steps. You can keep revisiting. There is no ultimate goal. There's no rule that says you have to do it once and done. And now we've covered relaxation. Let's get on to the hygiene concerns. It is really important that you, the person giving the P-spot massage, has clean hands, short, trimmed, smooth nails, no sharp edges. You can absolutely use gloves and always lube. Make sure that you're using an anally balanced lube, right? Because Different lubes have got different pH balances and some are great for the vagina and some are great for the anus. And the anus has a different pH balance to the vagina. Silicon is a great choice because it is long lasting. And remember, the anus does not self lubricate. So you're gonna wash your hands, you're gonna make sure you wash under your nails and all of that. Make sure your nails are smooth and put on gloves if you want to. Gloves are a great idea if you're gonna move into another activity afterwards. Now, how do you prepare the butt? Okay, that also can be washed with soap and water. An enema is a personal preference. If you choose to use an enema, that is completely okay. And that is essentially putting warm water into the rectum so that it can rinse out. So you repeatedly put warm water using an enema bulb and that would just wash out and remove any potential for poo, which can be really scary for some people. But it is not necessary. You don't have to do that. In fact, if you move your bowels once a day and make sure that you're washed nicely with soap and water, you should be good enough. And you know, if poo does happen, it is what it is. We are all adults here, right? So these hygiene practices will help to minimize the risk of infections and complications. But if you do have any unique concerns or if you want to speak to somebody about this, then absolutely go and speak to a sexual health care provider who will be able to give you more personalized advice. And now here's the bit you've been waiting for. The next tip on how to give him a mind-blowing peace spot orgasm is actually to try one of these four techniques. And the cool thing is three of these are done externally. So that busts the myth that the only way to stimulate the P-spot is inside the rectum. So remember, your partner is going to be in a vulnerable position. So throughout these techniques, you need to be present, you need to be giving them care and love and being accepting, feeling confident and communicating throughout. And my pro tip is no matter what kind of stimulation you're doing, always be incorporating some kind of penis stimulation at the same time because that is going to keep the body in pleasure relaxed and in arousal so the first way to access the p-spot when your partner is really aroused and relaxed is actually through the abdomen beneath the belly button and the pubic bone so kind of just below where their bladder is if they feel like they need to pee where would it be underneath that sensation that is one place to access the P-spot. And you can access this with the heel of your hand, right? Giving a nice 
deep massage into that area always getting consent reading their body for cues how are they feeling do they like it so you can be stimulating the shaft of the penis and pressing onto the abdomen with the heel of your hand to see how that feels and they will notice they will notice a feeling when you get to the right spot so that is the first way the second way to stimulate the prostate is actually in the butt crack itself, right? So we're not going inside the butt, this is the butt crack. So in the top of the butt crack, you can start by just placing your hand there at the top of the crack and letting them get used to that sensation because again, there can be different thoughts and feelings and sensations that come up as you start this. Keep communicating, ask them if they like it, invite feedback. And when they're ready, you can slide the top of your hand just inside the butt crack, or you can do a finger like this, or slide your hand and let them just feel that feeling of sensation in the top of the butt crack area. Let them know, how does that feel? Ask them, how does that feel? Right, this is the way we're starting to warm up. And if that is all you want to do for this session, absolutely great there's no pressure there's no rule that says how you have to do this the third way to stimulate the prostate is actually through the perineum and that is the landing strip of skin that sits underneath the balls and between the balls and the anus right so it's that strip of skin under there sometimes called the gooch in our house so this area actually homes the internal part of the penis you might notice that when the penis is erect you can actually feel a firmness there underneath the balls and that is actually like the base of the penile shaft so this can be great to incorporate while you're massaging the penis with your other hand you can cut the balls and let your fingertips explore that area underneath the balls right let your fingertips massage that area and see how your partner reacts so you're you're massaging the, the shaft of the penis and the perineum at the same time see how they react does that feel good are they going to allow you to go a little bit further in which case with your partner lying on your on their back get some lube and use your thumbs to kind of knead the perineum. Okay, so you can hold the balls if they need to be moved out of the way and knead the perineum. You're feeling underneath, you can feel the shaft of the penis and slightly below that is going to be where you can access the prostate from the external part of the body, right? So it might be about halfway down the perineum, but each person is different. So I would recommend stimulating one particular area lightly and then more firmly reading the body cues, seeing how your partner is feeling and noticing if you get a different kind of reaction or if you feel something slightly different. As I mentioned, the prostate is about the size of a walnut, so you may be able to feel it this way. So you're exploring with different areas in the perineum, with different pressures, with different speeds and different strokes. You're not just gonna go in and do all of them. You're gonna maybe try one way, get feedback, how does that feel? And then maybe try another way. And maybe it just feels good and that's enough exploration for this time, which again is perfect. But you might find that you really are able to enhance the feeling that they get through a hand job by adding some external peace spot massage. And now the fourth way to stimulate the peace spot to give him a mind blowing orgasm is of course, through the anus and into the rectum. This is the one that everybody seems to know about. So you're going to really take your time with this one. You're going to encourage them to relax. You're gonna be open-minded, as confident as you can be and letting them know that this is a safe space to explore this wonderful kind of stimulation. Now, it is important to know that some people don't enjoy prostate massage. Some people find it uncomfortable, or painful even. Some people find that it is numb and some people just do not want to do this altogether. And so let's just take a moment to acknowledge that and say, that is fine. If you don't want to have your peace spot stimulated, there is nothing wrong with that. This is your body. You get to decide. So you start off with clean hands or gloves and you're going to just put pressure on the anus, right? You can start with just your thumb on the anus, putting a little bit of pressure and allowing it to slowly relax, okay? So you can massage slightly. And again, at any stage of this technique, you can stop and that is good. Over time, your partner may relax. One tip is to actually invite them to contract and squeeze as hard as they can until they get fatigued and then their body is going to naturally open up. But you will notice that the anus almost invites you in. You're not forcing anything. You're waiting to be invited in, right? And then you're going to use a similar technique that you would use for G-spot stimulation in a, in a vagina, right? So with your partner on their back, you can try one or two fingers 
facing upwards towards their penis. It's the same kind of stimulation as you would give the G-spot, same kind of depth as well. So that everybody is different, but often it is like around a knuckle or two in. So start with one finger, maybe the baby finger, and you're actually going to start by just inserting this looped clean, maybe gloved finger in a little and out. You're not gonna take it completely out, slowly warming the, your partner up to the idea of this something being inside of them, which could be the very first time for some people. This is why I recommend sometimes that you start on your own. If you're the person with the prostate, explore this on your own in the bath perhaps. Then maybe you can move up to the next finger. And then maybe for a lot of people, it's gonna be the middle finger that is the one that can reach. And if you feel comfortable again over time, you can try two fingers. Okay, so once you have the fingers inside, you don't want to keep taking them in and out. You can, I'm, I'm showing you moving slowly in and out, but I'm not saying remove fully and then go back in again. Because once the anus is ready and has received that insertion, then it's going to feel more comfortable to keep it in there rather than keep taking it out. So what do you do once you're inside? This is the most direct way to stimulate the P-spot for mind-blowing orgasms, okay? So you can either keep your finger or fingers still in place and invite your partner to move their body so that they're in charge of the actual kind of stimulation, or you can try firm pressure, you can try tapping, you can try circles, and you can even try a little shape. Always get communication. What feels good? What doesn't feel good? What would they like you to do more of? If your partner finds that they're not enjoying it, they don't like it, they don't want it anymore, that is absolutely fine. When you are ready to conclude the experience with whatever conclusion has happened, whether they have ejaculated or not, have no judgment on that. You are going to slowly and gently remove your fingers, and then I recommend a gentle, firm press to just conclude that part of the experience. Additionally, you can also use toys to stimulate the prostate. There are toys specifically designed for prostate milking or stimulation, and you can also play around with different angles to see what feels best. And don't forget, encourage relaxation. Keep arousal going with other stimulations such as the penis. Be attentive to his cues, his physical body cues, and his words, and his moans, and his groans. And don't forget aftercare. Take the time afterwards to debrief what worked, what didn't. How did you feel? How did they feel? This can be an intense experience for everybody involved. Now, at this point of the video, you might be wondering what other ways you can use to give your partner a mind-blowing orgasm. And that's why your next step is to watch my video on how to give incredible head. In that video, I explain how you can blow his mind and actually enjoy and look forward to getting his cock in your mouth. Trust me, you're gonna love it. Thanks so much for sticking around and I'll see you next time.